Hello, my name is Jörg Everman. I'm with the Faculty of Business Administration, and my area of research is business process management, and I'm going to talk a little bit about AI applications in this area. So a very brief introduction, what is a business process? Well, a business process is a sequence of activities that are carried out by internal or external actors, and these actors can be human actors or they can be automated systems, information systems, and they together achieve a goal. When we look at a process, we can look at it from the perspective of the control flow. So this talks about the different activities, the different events that happen in the process, and any decisions that are being made in this process. We can also look at a process from the resource perspective. So who carries out what activities, and we might be interested in specific people, or we might be interested in roles or departments, or we might be interested in uh, different information systems that carry out or execute any of these activities. And the third perspective on a process is the data or information that flows through the process, the information that is used to carry out specific activities, or the information that is being produced by certain activities. Now, when such a process runs in an organization, we talk about a uh, case or a process instance. Uh, typically this is done using information technology to support this and by when we run this process we get a lot of information uh, that is being logged by these systems. We call this information the event log and an event log generally consists of a set of what we call traces. Every trace describes the execution of one process instance or one case. And the data that we get is, first of all, case level data. So for example, let's take a student registration process. Uh, the case level data might be the student number, the faculty or degree program that the student wants to register for. This is independent and it's always the same for all the different events or activities in that trace. Then we get event data. So this is specifically specific to the different events that happen in this process. So we might get the event type uh, describing the activity that is being carried out here. We might get a life cycle transition information. So that tells us whether this event signifies the start or the end of an activity. We usually get a timestamp with it. We might get a resource identifier, whether that's a student number or an employee number or whoever carries out this activity and we have different data attributes uh, that are specific to the activity that is being carried out here. On this slide I have a brief example of what such an event log might look like. You see four different cases or four different traces in this event log. Uh, every trace has a number of events. These events have an ID, a timestamp, an activity and a resource identifier. So this is a very simple example. This does not have any sort of application specific information attached to it. Now, um, it is quite useful to look at a currently running process instance or case and try to predict from this. So think about a customer service agent, customer calls up and says, how long is this process going to take? So it might be useful to predict the time to completion. Or a, uh, in a manufacturing process, the manufacturing engineer wants to see how likely is it that we'll get a fault in the next five activities here um, so that we can prevent this fault from occurring. So what we like to do is we like to predict from a trace prefix. So this is a small sequence or short sequence of events in a trace and we'd like to predict what happens after. And there are a number of prediction problems that we can define. Some of them are classification problems, so we can look at, for example, what's the next event that will happen, or we can look at uh, outcome-oriented um, problems. So how will this process instance end? Will it end normally, abnormally? Uh, we can look at constraint violations. Will a particular constraint be violated, etc.? Or we have regression type problems. So here the uh, for example, the time to the next event or the time to completion. Uh, we might look at if we have cost information, at the cost at completion, etc. 
And of course, we can extend this to application-specific data if we have such data in the uh, event log. Now, you might think, well, it's fairly straightforward to predict this because don't organizations have a well-defined process? Well, not necessarily. So oftentimes, these processes are made up as they go, and in particular, it is performance information that is uh, not necessarily easy to capture. Uh, the process may be non-deterministic. Uh, for example, think about resource allocation. Who does which activity? Maybe there is a random element to this. Uh, oftentimes, there are decisions being made in the process that are being made by humans. Um, decision rules might not be explicit. There might be external events uh, that affect the process. Maybe I don't capture all the relevant data or it's not available in my event log. And finally, I have a variable resource load that can affect the performance. So these are all uh, factors that make the process hard to predict. On top of that, we might have noisy and incomplete event logs. So the actual software systems that capture the events uh, might not do so all that well. So this is the general issue of prediction in uh, business processes. And in order to attack this problem, people have increasingly over the last five years or so looked to AI techniques. So uh, I'm going to describe two studies that I've done with uh, my colleagues. Back in 2016, 2017, we started looking at event logs and the traces in event logs somewhat in analogy to sentences in natural language. And we've adapted the then current techniques for word prediction to the prediction of next events in a process trace. So we started doing this with deep learning techniques, um, neural networks, artificial neural networks. Back then, um, the TensorFlow framework for doing this sort of stuff uh, was just being released. And I believe we started with version 0.7 of that. In that research paper, we predicted the next activity. Uh, we also looked at predicting the combination of activity and resource pair. Uh, and we looked at predicting the number of activities to completion of a case there. So what we did was we took an LSTM RNN network, a recurrent neural network with LSTM blocks. We stacked two LSTM blocks, one on top of the other, and then unfolded this uh, to at various uh, unroll lengths or unfolding lengths. We used an embedding layer to encode the different activity types. And we trained this on different data sets, or we, we, we applied this to different data sets, ranging anywhere between 7 and 37 different event types, and for a training set size of anywhere between 9,000 and 262,000 events there. And what we showed in that research was that we could significantly improve the prediction accuracy over the then state of the art, um, which was a non-neural network, non-deep learning approach based on hidden Markov models or hidden Markov chains there. A later paper, again by myself with some colleagues there, uh, used a different architecture for also predicting the next event. There we used stacked autoencoders, so we stacked a series of autoencoders to encode the features uh, and then used the logistic regression to make the actual prediction of the next event. Our evaluation at that point was a little bit more sophisticated. Uh, we looked at not only accuracy but also precision, recall, area under the curve, etc. And in that paper, we showed significant improvements over uh, classical or traditional um, prediction or classification mechanisms such as support vector machines, random forest, etc. Now, in the meantime, the field has matured and it is moving very quickly and people have played around with a lot of different neural network architectures. Uh, one of the more promising ones seems to be convolutional neural networks. So we use one dimensional convolutional neural networks because we're talking about sequences here. Um, that's been shown very promising, but people have essentially looked at just about everything um, that might be applicable here. Now, there are some open issues in this area of research. So from the engineering perspective, uh, we might ask, okay, what's the best architecture? What's the best input encoding? How do we deal with unbalanced data? Uh, what are the relevant features in an event log or in a trace, um, in particular when it comes to application data? 
And more recently, we need to think about explainable AI. So how do we engender trust in this, what's essentially a black box system of, of uh, a neural network so that we can tell the user how the system makes predictions and then uh, get that user to actually trust those predictions. And we'll need to move beyond prediction into decision making. So not only saying this is likely to happen, but then also saying, okay, what's the best decision? And then what's the likely outcome of that decision? So those are open issues as we go forward. Thank you.